Okay. I think I need to find a new parking spot because I just had a neighbor like walk out and walk right up right up to my car and just like freaking stare at me and just be like, I'm, I'm oh, he's, he's actually coming back now. I don't care. Let, let them think that I'm some spy, but actually I live like right around the corner and I don't actually want to want to create these videos uh, right outside my house because it's kind of a bit, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why, why, why I should care. Um, but you know me, I always have to start every single video with a little freaking typical British wine session. I'm going to make an effort to stop that. Anyway, what's up guys, Shreem welcome back to another video. So I'm just fresh off of a previous video. Mm, 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 mm. Coffee with xylitol and L-Dopa so that I feel super motivated. And cacao and ashwagandha. And Gynostemma, which is the most potent antioxidant adaptogen herb on the planet. I'm going to be, it's going to be a good video, I hope. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk a bit about, I wanted to re-record a video. Because uh, a few days ago I stopped drinking and I wanted to do a, a video series where I was talking about it for a bit. But talking about other topics. But the problem was, is that I am too freaking crazy to do it. And I've tried it again and again. And I, I must have done... I must have done like four videos for you guys and I just haven't put them up because I'm literally watching it and I'm thinking like, what the hell am I talking about? I'm jumping from topic to topic. I can't remember what I'm saying. Like there's no clear, clear, coherent thing. And it's like, it's because my brain is dealing with all this freaking, is speed detoxing all this alcohol and tobacco um, to the point where I, I, my brain doesn't function. And that's by design, by the way. I know how to boost the detox process so that... For example, I haven't, like, two days after I, excuse me, two, two days after I quit smoking, I don't feel any smoking. And uh, two days after, yeah, like, within 48 hours, I don't have any cravings for cigarettes and or, or alcohol, even though I can literally smoke, like, half a pack of cigarettes a day, two, three, quarter pack of cigarettes a day, um, and then just stop. And uh, the, the downside about that is that I become immune, I become public crazy man number one. And I have to literally shut myself in my room and not talk to anyone, even though the people upstairs and downstairs probably think that I'm crazy. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to just re-record something that I did before because I think I need to talk about this. Uh, it's quite an important topic and it's pertinent to YouTube and me, the future of me making videos. And the reason why I wanted to quit alcohol because there is a man who I met a while ago and he quit alcohol 100%. He didn't socially drink, he didn't socially anything. And I wanted to ask him why, because I've always wanted to taper down my alcoholism. And um, and uh, I asked him, well, but, but, but I always wanted to be like social. I wanted to be like every two weeks, you know, you know, like every two weeks I wanted to go out and have a drink and just like enjoy myself. And what he told me was actually quite interesting. He said that, yeah, he, he tried to do that, but then he would then take the drink home with him. And then he would wake up the next day and he would drink. And then all of a sudden he would wake up late for work and he would feel like crap throughout the day and he'd start being an asshole to the people that he knew. And everything started to slowly fall apart. And what I realized is that, wow, that's me. Because I'm... It's really hard to say this, it's really hard to admit it, but yeah, I am a recovering alcoholic. I I am a recovering alcoholic. Um, and, and one of the main reasons why I'm able to drink such a high amount and still remain not in hospital is because I know how to detox my liver uh, to the point where, like I said, I can just detox a lot of the alcohol within like 48 hours. I mean, the vast majority of it, obviously, it takes a while to, to get out to the point where I don't feel any alcohol hangover effects, you know? And because I know how the liver works, and it's one of the worst things that ever happened to me. Because in his situation, he was he drank so much that he went into hospital. That that that, that he nearly died. And I was thinking, wow, maybe I needed to nearly die. Maybe maybe I, that was something that I needed to do. Um, because there's someone in my family that was also in the same situation, and uh, she went to hospital a few times. It took her a while to finally quit. But me, I I'm able to drink like 30, 25, 30 CLs of gin, of 40% gin every single night, and just be totally fine. And that started off as one can of K-Cider, and then it just worked its way up as my liver became more and more developed. Um, oh, by the way, the liver doesn't itself develop. Essentially, uh, the, the, the enzyme that... <clears throat> because whenever you drink a specific kind of alcohol, the liver um, produces certain enzymes. 
so that you don't, um, so that it, it can be broken down. And the more and more you drink, the more and more enzymes it produces to the point where it just keeps producing those enzymes even when you're not drinking. This is how you can become a quote unquote heavyweight because those enzymes are just always present in your liver to break down certain things. However, one thing that I've noticed is that it only works for certain types of alcohol. Like if you drink the same drink over and over and over and over and over again, you can drink a lot of that one drink because there it's almost as if the enzyme hooks into that specific type of alcohol. But if I went from drinking gin to then drinking a whole ton of whiskey, I'd be throwing up everywhere. Whereas I could be drinking gin the whole same night. But anyway, espousing the benefits and the amazing effects of the liver. Uh, back to me admitting that I'm a freaking alcoholic because I have lost years of my life in a total blur. I have lost, there are entire years of my life that I cannot remember simply because I would drink to stay, to stay sane almost. But the thing is, is that I wouldn't remember the day. I would just forget the day. And then if you drink every night, you'd forget the week. And then if you drink every no, not every day for every month. These days, there are a few breaks here and there, you know. <laughs> there are here and there throughout the whole year of alcoholism. I did take a break, you know. I wasn't that bad. <laughs> the cope. Come on, Freeman, let it out. Um. So I would just drink, um, say like six days, five, six days a week, and so I would lose entire months of my life, and that would translate into years. So. There are entire years of my life that I literally cannot remember what the hell happened other than like snippets of like stuff that happened at work maybe. And like nothing new happened, nothing, I just didn't achieve anything. I would just drink and then turn into a blur and then wake up. And it's not something that I'm proud of, but I recognize it at the time as a tool that I needed to be able to get me through um, the life that I was living at the time. And um, I realize now that it's something that is just a freaking habit because it's so easy to do now because before I used to drink I used to drink because I was in an environment whereby um it was horrible to be around and so I would drink to medicate myself because it was difficult explicating myself out of that environment because of my rampant autism and not being able to hold down a job and so to be able to square that circle of well it hurts to hold down a job and everyone thinks that you suck and like you're just lying about how your life is hard I would drink to just numb the pain and so that became a lot and then as I start as I reversed my autism and as I started to get myself better I, I didn't need I started to be able to maintain a job I started to be able to earn money and uh, eventually I moved out lived in my own room um, rented a room <laughs> living in my own room <laughs> <laughs> a, re a mortgage on a cupboard under the stairs. Is that a thing? Is that a thing, by the way? Can you get a mortgage for a room? Or am I just stupid? Or is it something someone is working on? Or is it one of those micro flats that's like... It's like, <laughs> you know, it might as well be a cupboard under the stairs. Oh my god, I'm so fortunate and I'm grateful for living in this first world. Um, kind of. After I moved out, I got I, I got my own place. I started to feel great again. And um, I thought, yeah, it's time to control this thing. And that's when the desire for me to drink shifted to something completely different. Um, and this is what it is currently right now. Currently right now, it's an, un, it's, an un, it's an unhealthy habit. But it's also, I realize that I drink when I'm not doing productive work that I enjoy. And my cravings will literally disappear when I give myself the emotional stimulation that I require and the physical stimulation that I require. Uh, to the point where I can just turn off and deactivate my smoking and alcohol cravings if I face my own damn shadow, essentially. Now, what does that mean? So I drink when I'm not doing any productive work that I can sit back and say I really wanted to do that and I feel as if it's progressing me to something new and out the box and it's challenging me mentally. If I'm not doing that throughout the day, I will drink. And so I, I can literally work 60, 70 hours a week and um, get home and don't feel like I've accomplished a thing. Like, I haven't accomplished a thing. And I will just hit the bottle because it's like, I just feel like, what the hell is the point in my life? You know, this is something from a very, very young age is that, and why I, I hate the whole Tony Goggins, Tony Goggins. <laughs> oh boy, can you imagine Tony Goggins? Tony Robbins and David Goggins combined. Um, no, um, why I hate this whole sort of hustle thing 
Well, I don't hate it. It's that what a lot of the hustle porn doesn't mention, fails to mention enough, which they really do need to mention, I think, because it puts people out, out it puts people off of the 90 hour work weeks. Is that when you do something you love, it doesn't feel like work at all. And so you can do seven days a week work. That's totally missing. And they do sort of touch on it, whereby they sometimes mention that if you keep doing something uncomfortable, it eventually becomes comfortable. But if it's soul destroying, you're always going to be in that uncomfortable zone, which is why a lot of people fail at following this whole hustle porn stuff. Because... They're like, I keep doing it, and I'm just not getting better, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And everyone's just telling me that you're just not hustling hard enough, but actually your soul is screaming out to you that this is something that you've never wanted to do, but you think that it's something you need to do. And that, that's what I hated about the whole Tony, Go <laughs> Tony Goggins. Ah! This whole David, David Goggins stuff. You know who I'm talking about. It's like the most important thing you need to mention to someone. Is that you need to find something that you want. It's not that you should work 80 hours a work. It's that you have to find something that's worthy of you working 80 hours a week for. Find something that's worthy of you working 80, working 80 hours a week. And you freaking won't work. Won't need to work 80 hours a week. Now, why the hell did I talk about this? Tangent, again. Um, so, I was, I was doing a whole ton of work in something that I hated. And so, I turned to alcohol to... To soothe my <laughs> my aching soul, <clears throat> because it would just make me forget. And um, and honestly, thinking about it, I'm actually kind of kind of grateful that it did. Because sort of, because I recognize that in, in in the position that I was, alcohol seemed to be the easiest way for me to find a way out of my miserable existence. And in fact, it actually motivated me to find an answer because I wasn't just drinking and happy. I was drinking and trying to find out why the hell I was unhappy. You know, and so it was almost like it soothed me while I was through that transition period of trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do and where the hell I wanted to go. And um, it really, and in fact, um, it also had some, 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 some other benefits as well, before I talk about the ultimate drawbacks of it, is that whenever I drink, I feel like zen. Like, not just like at peace, I mean lucid zen. I mean, you can be, be, be having a conversation with me and... Like, you will not know that I'm drunk, but I'm so freaking super lucid that, like, it's incredible. And I have all sorts of incredible insights while, while, while inebriated that I know are incredible because they translate to me when I'm sober. And it's like, why didn't I think of that? Oh, because I release my inhibitions and all of a sudden my innate wisdom can flow out of me. And so I learned a lot while drunk. And I'm, I'm not one of those people that get so blasted. That they're just like throwing up everywhere and they can't string a sentence together. Like, I can walk on a tightrope. You know, I am great at driving as well. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not going to sit here and be stupid and say I've never drunk driven in my life. There have been a couple occasions, but um, no, don't do it. It's, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Um, because it makes you feel more confident, but it does delay your reaction time. But uh, jokes aside, morbid jokes aside... Uh, like, I am one of those lucid drunks. I, I'm one of those people who you will not notice that is drunk unless they get so smashed that, okay, it's time for me to close my eyes. But w when I get there, I'll sway a bit and then I'll sit down. <laughs> and I just won't move for like a while, maybe all night. But that's that, that's how I that, that is how I do it. But anyway, like, I, I, I felt so zen. And I, I realized, and, I, and I'm so grateful for it because it allowed me to 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 really learn you know, I didn't just drink and numb myself. I drank to try and figure out what the hell was going on with my life. I drank to try and figure out, okay, like, what is all this? Like, what I want to do is literally just go on for at least a month, at least one month, but not a drop of alcohol. Which is difficult because Christmas is coming up and I've got an office Christmas party and I have a family Christmas party and all this other stuff. And I think I might drink. I think I might drink. So I'm going to do this for a month. Um, except for the day where I have to go out for the office party, if I drink more than once in that in this whole month, so I'll, I'll go the whole to the whole office party thing. Um, and I will be having drink there because I don't like any of them, and I will be having the family drinking at, at the family thing because I don't like any of them. <laughs> but um, but um, but if I drink more than that one day, then I'll then then, then I would have failed the challenge. Then I would have failed because I I'm so sick of drinking. 
which messes up my sleep, which messes up my morning routine, which makes it so I have no energy to do videos, which makes it so that I have no, no energy after work to do any exercise or to work at the gym or to do any of that. I have no energy to do any of that. And it's just meaning that the only life that I can live is going to work and being told what to do and hating the whole day and just craving when I'm going home and being able to drain my lack of energy and my lack of and my frustration and not being able to get 100% out of my day with another drink. You know. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for today, guys. Frame it out. Peace.